Hi everyone. My name is Tay Whiteside. I'm here at my small fabrication shop here in Roanoke, Virginia called Lift Arc Studios. And I want to talk about something that uh, happened to me recently, uh, a, a journey I, I went on and what I learned from it. So um, I've been a welder for about 15 years. Most of my experience has been around a MIG welder, which is a wire feed welder. Um, nowadays, probably one of the most simplest forms of welding to learn and to get into. It's very accessible. You can get good pretty quick. Um, and then there's TIG welding, which is uh, tungsten inert gas welding, which is, uh, if you don't know anything about welding, it's the kind you see where people have a torch in one hand and that, that wobbly piece of wire in their other hand. TIG welding is the most complex form of welding to a degree. I think most people would agree. Um, but it's also the most versatile, the most precise, the cleanest. Um, so there's a lot of advantages to it. I started to learn how to TIG weld about five years ago. And uh, the machine that I originally learned on was by a company called Eastwood. It was the Eastwood TIG 200 ACDC. A great welder to start on. Uh, we even put it through some pretty intense paces, years and years of abuse. I've had it now for five, six years, and it still works great. So honestly, uh, I have a lot of good things to say about Eastwood. That was about a $750 machine. Great place to start if you're looking to TIG. Uh, it, the settings are very basic on a machine like that Eastwood. There's not a whole lot of thinking you need to do. You just have to understand some basics. Uh, and it does aluminum, but you know all you need to control on a machine like that is your AC balance, pre-flow, post-flow, and your amperage, and the machine does the rest of it for you. When I started to get better, I had the opportunity to use a Miller Dynasty 210DX TIG, TIG welder for about three years at my old job. Miller is one of my favorite welding manufacturing brands um, of all time. They've always served me well. They are built like tanks. Uh, local shops can service them. They are made to be serviced. They're easy to work on. They're dependable. So I really like Miller welders. My MIG welder is a Miller Matic 212 that I've had for about 10 years. Um, but so I had a, well, the dynasty that I was using at my old job, you know, it had more settings than my Eastwood, but it still did a fair bit of thinking for you. You could program upslope, downslope. Um, it had a pulse setting. You could change the AC balance. Um, the frequency on AC, all the basic settings that you can change on most TIG welders. But still, it, was, it had a lot of presets that helped you get to a usable setting pretty quickly. And most guys, if they use a Miller, myself included, once you got it pretty close to where you liked it, you just kind of left those settings alone for probably the duration of time that you own the welder, because you really don't need to, to change much. Um, so, when I started my own shop here in Roanoke, Virginia, um, last year, last October, I was uh, able to borrow the Miller Dynasty 210 that my old employer had. They had no use for it, and I, I had some TIG jobs I needed to tackle, so I was able to borrow that welder. Now, their demo period with that welder ran up. I had the option to buy the Miller Dynasty, I chose not to because it was the non-DX version. It was very oversimplified and it was still like $3,800, which is a lot of money for someone who just started a business, a small business at that. Um, you know, I realized the benefit of, quote, buying once and crying once, you know, spend money on good tools and you won't have to keep replacing them. But uh, that was still a lot of money for a TIG machine, especially because I've been hearing about companies like Everlast. Over the past few years, I've heard of Everlast welders uh, from a few different YouTube channels that I follow, uh, the Fabricator series. Uh, Justin Voss, I believe, is another guy's name who does welding reviews and TIG welding stuff. Um, and various other places, Jody from Welding Tips and Tricks uh, tends to like the Everlast stuff. And you can't beat the price point, you know. Um, the Everlast 210 EXT, which is in many ways comparable to the Dynasty 210 that I was using, 
is almost a third of the price. Uh, that machine is $1,500 brand new, whereas a new Dynasty is almost $4,000. So, uh, when it became time for me to buy a professional TIG welder for my shop, I went with the Everlast. And I ordered one last December, December 15th, I ordered the 210 EXT. Shortly after, I got an email from Everlast saying that they are out of the 2020 models, and in three or four weeks, they will have the stock of the 2021 models coming in. And they asked me, can I wait that long for a welder? I said fine, because I still have my Eastwood TIG that I can use in the meantime, so I waited. A month later, January 15th, 16th, uh, my welder shows up, along with all the other torches and accessories that I bought with it, and I was super stoked to start using it. I had it shipped to my house. UPS looked like they dropped it off the top of a 10-story building. <laughs> the box was torn all to hell, holes through it all, so I was a little worried about that, but I took it to my shop nonetheless, unboxed it uh, live on my YouTube channel just because it seemed like a fun thing to do, and everything looked fine. Kudos to Everlast for packing everything. There was very thick styrofoam in there, keeping everything safe. The machine didn't have a scratch on it, and all the accessories seemed to do great. So I get the machine out, I wire it up, plug everything in, hook up the gas, put the consumables in my torches, and start playing with it, start welding. You know, I start off on DC, using, doing some steel welding. Um, DC is much less complicated than AC aluminum welding. So everything feels good, everything feels normal. And then I try to do some aluminum welding on AC. Now, coming from the Miller machines, where a lot of the thinking is done for me, I was a little overwhelmed with the control system on the front of the Everlast. Uh, a lot more buttons and dials and settings. Nonetheless, I've seen all these settings before. I've watched a bunch of videos. I've messed with what I thought to be fairly complicated TIG machines in the past, so I wasn't coming at it completely green. So I put it on the settings that I thought I needed to weld aluminum and I go to strike an arc and weird stuff starts to happen. The arc's bouncing around, popping and cracking. It's not uh, starting in a predictable fashion. Uh, contaminants are all over the place. Um, I'm having a hard time controlling the heat. So I'm starting to think, you know, okay, it can't be me, right? I've been welding for four or five years at least. I've, I've welded aluminum a lot. I've done custom intercooler piping and whatnot on 700 plus horsepower race cars. It can't be me, right? It's gotta be the machine. So here's where I started to mess up. So my thought immediately goes to, okay, UPS beat the crap out of this machine on the way in. Uh, maybe something on the inside's messed up. So I start to do some research. The problem I was having with it was the start of the arc. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's the high frequency module because in TIG welders, uh, nowadays at least, you can start the arc without scratch starting, without doing what's called lift arc. You can just pull the button on, on the torch and uh, there's a high frequency generator inside the machine that will build up a huge charge. It'll jump the gap between the tungsten and your work establishing an arc and then it'll come back down to normal power levels and your and your welding so i figured okay my high frequency generator is all messed up um, and sometimes the electrodes inside that create the high frequency arc get uh, they're not spaced properly so i figured okay maybe if it was drop kicked by ups maybe the inside's all messed up so i take the cover off the machine i see the high frequency uh, electrodes, I get out a feeler gauge. Uh, it's supposed to be 0.035 uh, inches gap in between the two electrodes. I check it, everything's within spec. I'm like, okay, fine, I put the machine back together. So then I film the video that I filmed earlier and I put my welding screen in front of my camera so I could get an arc shot and I filmed the hard starting issue. And basically my narrative was my machine's broken uh, Everlast, please see this. I hope you see this. That way I can get uh, a new machine or RMA this one, send this one back, get one that works. And so I post it. I post it on the Everlast 
uh, group page on Facebook. I post it on some forums. I email it directly to Everlast, and I post it on YouTube and my Facebook channels. Basically casting a wide net, trying to get as much help on this issue as I could. Immediately, I was inundated with comments from welders who have much more experience than me, uh, saying that you know it's less likely to do with the machine and more to do with my settings. Are you set to this? Are you set to that? You should try this. You know, they could look at my weld, look at the arc, look at what's happening, and give me tips on what to do, like any experienced welder should be able to do. Be able to read the arc and be able to read the weld and, and say, hey, it looks like this because of that setting, or you're doing this wrong. So, uh, at which point I was contacted by a talented welder named Mark Winchester. Uh, Winchester Metalworks on Instagram and Facebook. He's out in California. He is an Everlast brand ambassador. Uh, Mark DM'd me on Facebook and said, here's how to fix your problem. And set to work giving me essentially a free masterclass in aluminum TIG welding. Uh, right, I highly suggest following Mark on Instagram and Facebook. His work is beautiful. I mean, if there ever was an ambassador for dime stacking, that's, that's uh, Mark. So, you know, he walked through every part of my settings, what I was doing, how to set it up from, you know, starting amperage to AC balance to using a gas lens not, and not to use a gas lens, use a regular cup, uh, tungsten stick out, amperage, foot pedal control, argon, purity, gas pressures, flow, all that stuff. I mean, basically walk through everything with me. Uh, and I didn't ask him to do that. He didn't have to do that. He's a brand ambassador for Everlast and I'll be honest, um, now that Mark has been that generous with me, with his time, uh, I think much higher of Everlast and the people that they keep around them, the affiliates they trust with their brand identity and image. Um, kudos to everyone. Uh, Oleg, Mark, and Richard, the, uh, some of the members of the Everlast team that are very active in the Everlast Welders Facebook group. Um, you guys are great. Um, I just want to take a moment and say I'm sorry for posting a video and spreading it everywhere with the narrative that this is the machine's fault, Everlast, cheap stuff, don't do it, should have bought a Miller. That was, I used, I thought that at the beginning of this whole process, but now it's obvious that uh, it was me. I'm still a noob. I have a lot to learn. And Mark and the guys on the forum, the Facebook group have been incredibly generous with sharing their knowledge and settings and what to do. And so now I have a lot to practice. I have a lot to work on. Um, I have a lot to improve upon, a lot of settings to try out, a lot of trial and error to go through, like learning anything. But I guess the point of this video is to let other new welders know the mistake that I made, how to avoid making the mistake. Don't go directly to blaming the equipment. Um, really take some time on the front end when you buy a new machine, especially ones as intricate as an Everlast. Um, do the research, look, learn as much as you can about what the settings do, what they're for, uh, how to, what settings to change when you hit certain problems in your weld. I got cocky, I got comfortable with machines I've used in the past and uh, I quit learning. I quit pushing myself to try new things because I didn't think I had to. I thought, you know, Miller's one of the best welding companies there is. I know how to use their TIG welder. How much more knowledge could there be to gain from TIG welding? Well, I learned the answer to that question and I'm glad I did because now with a machine as customizable and as versatile as an Everlast, I'm excited to learn more about what's happening in the arc, how to control things, uh, and ultimately how to be a better welder and to weld a larger variety of materials uh, with a TIG welder. Thank you for listening. I'm sorry to the guys at Everlast for putting out uh, a video and posts under the narrative that I was dragging you through the coals. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you guys learned a little something from this. I know I did. I took notes on the conversation I had with Mark and I'm going to keep adding to that notebook when I try uh, different settings, 
how those settings impact the weld, and then um, you know, fine tuning it from there. So. Thank you guys. Uh, highly recommend an Everlast so far. Um, customer service has been amazing. Their price point's amazing. The machine is well built. The torches are well built. Uh, everything feels professional. It's a very nice machine. Uh, can't recommend it enough, and I can't wait to learn more about it. So thanks for watching. Have a good one.